everybody. We've got an interesting milling project to do today. This great chunk of British iron next to me here is a 1950s Alexander Master Toolmaker milling machine. Now what we're going to be working on is the vertical head. Let me bring you in closer and then I can explain what we're going to be doing. Now the vertical head is actually made up out of two large castings. There's one at the rear which you can't see at the moment but on its forward face it has a boss which protrudes. Now the forward casting of the forward head that actually sits on that boss and that enables this casting to twist and it can twist 45 degrees in either direction. Now once you have this casting at the angle that you want it you don't want it to move and that's where the locking mechanism comes in. Now it's locked by two T-bolts. There's one here and there should be one on the other side but as you can see there's just a hole. What we're going to be making are the T-bolts. Now what makes it interesting is the T-slot that those T-bolts fit into is a circle. So we can't just make a standard T-bolt, its head has got to be a special shape to suit the round T-slot. Now the head is being held in place by this original T-nut, so what I'm going to do is put a little piece of wood on the table, lift the table and that will support the weight of the head and then I can remove this T-nut without any worries that the head is just going to fall off. So just come up, support the weight which is just there, grab my spanner, loosen the, the T-nut and now supporting the weight of the head with the bed just tap and that is now free. Bring this forward and take the head away. And now we can see the T-slot and we can remove this original T-slot bolt which is just here. With the forward part of the vertical head removed we can now see the forward face of that large casting that you couldn't see before. You can see the T-slot is around here, the boss that I spoke about that protruded forward from the front face is this surface around here, around the outside of the bevel gear. Now this is the original T-bolt and you can see that there's an access hole just here to get the bolt into the T-slot which is around here. Eee. Now the thing which makes this T-bolt not very nice is that when it was made they've welded this top onto, onto a bolt and then taken it off with, a, with an angle grinder around here to make it flat but what they've actually done it's not very flat at all and it is at that angle so sort of cone shape and that's not very good because as you if this is in place in the slot and you start pulling instead of the load going nicely on the back of this this T-slot it's very much concentrated towards the forward edge and if you over tighten this you're liable to crack it away and that's really not very nice. The T-slot has an undercut on this side and an undercut on that side. I need to know how deep that undercut is. Now the way that I found it out was using a piece of wire I bent the wire at 90 degrees, it was longer when I started, I then tucked it behind here and pushed it back so it scraped along the, the rear of that undercut. Uh, that left a gap here. Now that gap or the distance of that gap I snipped off the front of the wire, tried it again, kept going backwards and forwards until the point that the end of the wire touched the rear of the undercut this piece of the wire was parallel with that surface. I then did the same on the other side and they both worked out to be the same strange enough and uh, that depth is 3 16th of an inch. Now we need a couple more dimensions so we can draw out this T-slot. Now I'm looking at the inner diameter of the, of the slot which is just about there and that says 4.838 Right, let's see how wide the slot is now. There, that's come out to 0.507. Now, we need to know the depth of the T-slot. That's from this surface here to the rear surface back there. And that comes out at 0.577. 
Right, the last measurement we need to take is the thickness of this top lip that makes up the T-slot. Now, I'm going to do that with a piece of steel which I've bent at 90 degrees. And now push the calipers down just there. So that's a quarter of an inch. I call this the original T-bolt, but only because it's the one that came with the machine. I like to think the original manufacturers, GHA, would have made a T-nut or a T-bolt to suit the radius of the T-slot. Uh, the type that we're going to make is going to be of a slightly different design. Instead of being a T-bolt, we're going to have a T-nut. So we will be machining uh, this part. Now this is a standard T-nut and it has parallel sides. The type we make is going to be uh, machined on a radius. Uh, into that we're going to have a, uh, a threaded shaft and then of course onto the top of that there will be our clamping nut. The shaft will be loctited into the nut to make one item and then the nut there will be clamping the head into position on the milling machine. I now need to make a full scale drawing of the T-slot. I have my notes of the dimensions but I can't find my lovely shiny British Thornton compass. I need a compass so I've just taped together a more and right and click click pencil hybrid. <laughs> that should do the trick. As you can see the dimensions are in imperial and metric. I'll be machining the T-nuts on my Milo milling machine. It's a metric machine so it'll be easier for me to work in metric. Using the dimensions from this first drawing I work out what size the new T-nut must be and generate this second drawing. Dimensions underlined in blue came from the first drawing. Dimensions underlined in red were calculated once I decided how much clearance was required between the T-nut and the T-slot. Now we know the size the T-nuts must be, we can search for some steel. Can't find anything new, but I do find this. It looks like it was a part of a clamp in a previous life. It's 16mm thick, that's 5 eighths of an inch, and I think large enough for two T-nuts. I make a scale drawing of the T-slot, lay the material on top and then draw around it. Well, it's looking promising. I add a few lines and what do you know, we can make two T-nuts. Each nut will be about 25 degrees wide, which is too big, but all we need to do is cut them down until we can fit them through the access hole and into the T-slot. Now, this is a piece of metal I hope to be making the two T-nuts out of. Now it sounds a bit of a hard light, so what I want to do is check that it's fairly flat. The way I'm going to do that is by rubbing this onto memory cloth that's on a flat surface. It's time to start cleaning up this block. Uh, I rubbed this surface on the emery cloth and as you can see it's, uh, it's fairly flat, flat enough to what, uh, for what we want. So we now need to put it into the vise. I'm going to be putting in a parallel first so it can sit on that. I've already wiped the vise and the parallel so I know that they're all clean. Now goes in our piece of steel and now we do up the vise. Right, it's time to clean this top surface. I removed the job from the vise, uh, cleaned it all out, took the burrs off the uh, job, swapped it round in the vise so the cut surface is now at the bottom and uh, the next surface we're going to be cleaning out is that top surface there. I've moved the job in the vise, changed the parallels to hold it at a good height and can now machine its first large surface. Once this surface is finished I turn the job over and machine the second large surface. The cleanup is now finished, we don't have to touch the ends of the job as they will be machined later. All four sides have now been machined and they're nice and clean, we've got the big side there uh, and both of the, the small edges. The last face which is there has still got some of the drill holes in when this was used as a drill platform but that's not going to affect us I don't think. Uh, we need to get two T-nuts out of this, one on this side of the hole and one on the other side of the hole. Now these are the normal T-nuts I use on the bed of the milling machine and our nuts are going to be round about the same size, a little bit bigger. Now we run into the normal problem of how we're going to hold our job and then machine it on the milling machine to get what we want. Well, each T-nut needs a tapped hole in its centre. If we drill and tap our plate with the two tapped holes our T-nuts will need, 
We can utilise them and hold our plate in position using two bolts through a fixture plate from below. Now it's going to be milled on the rotary table so we can get the correct curve on the inside and the outside. But we only have one securing hole per nut and if I try to machine around that nut on its own then it's liable to spin and damage the cutter. So what I want to do is from the dimensions on the drawing is drill and tap a hole here and a hole there and then hold this down to a sub plate and that sub plate will be clamped to the rotary table. I've marked out and centre punched where I want the two holes and I'm going to go through with a 3.5 millimetre drill first to act as a pilot. I have some offcuts from a CNC machine. This triangular piece of aluminium plate is one of them. It's 15.5mm thick, that's about 5 8 of an inch, and that's ideal for what we need. I scratch through the position of the two holes in our job and then centre dot the plate. On to the bench drill next, I'm using the same 3.5mm drill as a pilot. Right, it's time to get some threads in our job. Now we need to drill and tap these two pilot holes. Uh, the original thread, I suspect on the machine, would have been 7 16th Whitworth. The T-bolt that we took out, that original T-bolt, that was actually an M12 thread. Now I'm thinking I'm going to be staying with the M12 thread, mainly because I haven't got any 7 16th nuts or any 7 16th bolts, but I've got a lot of M12, so it's a lot easier for me to do that. If it becomes a pain later on, then I can always make two more nuts. So that's it, we're going to go with uh, M12 and that means we need to drill these two holes 10.2mm. Uh, that's the tapping size for our M12 thread. Before we drill our holes we're going to have to set the, the drill up. Uh, this is our 10.2mm uh, drill. Now to drill this I want to clamp the job to the table. Now the first thing, I don't want to damage the table any more than it is damaged already. Uh, so I'm going to put the job on a piece of wood. Now the next thing I need to do is line up the centre of the chuck to the centre of the hole. Now I've put in a small centre in this chuck, you see? It's actually an old milling cutter that's been uh, ground off and uh, is quite accurate. Uh, so that we need to put into our hole. So if I bring the, the chuck down and then put that centre into the hole like that, uh, it has now lined everything up. The thing is I now need to hold this in position whilst I get the clamps on. Now how am I going to do that? Well, to lock the chuck down, that's uh, actually easily done. Uh, we can wind the, the chuck down like this. Uh, the centre is now lined up with that hole. And as I bring it down, the job will move. So the centre is bang in the centre of this hole and is now clamping that uh, down. This lever here is the lock that holds the chuck down. So we bring this forward, tighten it up, and now the chuck is down, the centre's in the hole, and the job is quite secure. So I know that that's in the right place. And now it's time to do up the clamps. Okay, we've put the right hand clamp on first. That's this one, we bring this forward. And you can see how the, the clamp works. We've got a T-nut underneath here, a short threaded stud, spanner, and we are tighten it up. We don't have to go too mad with these. Right, that's the clamps secure. And that drill is now bang in line with the hole that it's got to cut. And now it's time to drill our first 10.2mm hole. And we've got a little bit of cutting fluid on the drill and the hole. Now let's see how it goes. You can see the drill is cutting quite nicely. The uh, swarf is coming away in two little spirals. I don't want them to get too long, so I'm 
breaking the, the cut just by lifting the drill a little and that snaps off the swarf a little bit more oil the oil helps to lubricate uh, the drill and also cool it down as well we don't want to go into the bed and so I'll be taking it easy towards the bottom of the hole we must be somewhere close now let's just have a look in the hole and we're just going through now we're in the wood take that away and we're right the way through I've taken the drill out and put the center back in the chuck reason being is because the center uh, is in line with the hole I can use that uh, to help tap the hole and get the tap straight and um, every tap has got or most taps have a, a center in the top of the tap so I can put this in the in the hole I've already put some cutting fluid uh, on the tap I can bring the center down so it goes into that that hole there and now we can start to tap the hole I drilled and started to tap the second hole whilst the job was still on the table of the bench drill I now moved the job to the vise and finished tapping the M12 thread down through both of the holes unfortunately that's all we have time for in this video However, in part two, I shall remove the vise from my Marlow milling machine, attach the rotary table onto the bed, explain what a rotary table does, and then machine the fixture plate to accept our job. Ah, oh, there's lots of interesting things coming up, so I hope to see you there. Could you do something like this? Of course you can. And with that, this video is at an end. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time.